When you launch ImagePrint for the first time, some printers, like the Canon printers, need to make contact with the printer and download the media list. This is perfectly normal. It may take a couple minutes depending on the connection to the printer. Once ImagePrint loads, you'll see a default page size, the dashboard, and the image browser pointing to our test images. If you don't see the image browser, you can load it by going under View and select Add Image Browser. The image browser will load in a default location, but you can pick it up by the title bar and move it to any location you want. I like mine in the middle. Now I'm going to go to the folder icon and point the image browser to a folder that contains images that I want to use. In my case, it's going to be my demo images folder. Once the images appear, you can adjust the image browser for the number of columns of images you want to see on the screen. Now there's still a couple things we need to do before we can make our first print. And one of those is located under printer in the dashboard. So let's go ahead and expand that and take a look at this section. Now you can see the printer I've installed, which is my Canon Pro 2600. And next to that, it's the page size. So let's talk about page size for a bit. I'm on a roll paper, so I need to set at least the width of the roll that I'm using and the length. Now I can use a default page size that represents that width uh, and length from the drop-down list, or at the very top, I could choose user defined and I can set up a custom page size with the width and any length I want. Now, if you're using a sheet, you need to set the exact sheet size because the printers know what sheet size is loaded when they went through the process of loading the sheet. So if there's a mismatch, it won't allow you to print. So you need to be exact when you're using sheet media. Now there's some other options we need to set as well. And for me on roll paper, I'm using, I'm not going to be using borderless. So I'm going to turn that off. And we have auto cut, and that means to cut the page after it's done printing, and inked area, which means don't advance any paper after we're done printing the image on the page. This way you won't waste any. Now we need to set a profile. So under media management, I'm going to set it to photo black color, and I'm going to choose the manufacturer of the paper, in this case, Canon, and my actual paper under media. I'm using Canon Photo Pro Luster, so I'm going to choose that. Profile quality is the quality mode that we actually built the profile at. And in most cases, that's always going to be highest. Then we have display lighting. We, be, we build profiles in different lighting conditions. In this case, we're going to stay with daylight. Download and apply that profile. And now you're going to see a house symbol. That means that profile now resides on your system. The print quality settings are the actual printer modes for your printer. I'm going to print at the highest quality and I'm going to change my dither DPI to 600. Now ink sets grayed out. That's something that you don't need to worry about. And ink limit is only if you want to restrict the amount of ink being laid down on the media. Now under advanced, you're going to see the type of paper. This is the media that we built the profile against. And then you can see any options your printer may have. Now you don't need to change that media setting. That media setting just is a confirmation if you need to check how that media was built, how that profile was built. And in most cases, that won't be changed unless you're instructed to do so by our support department. Okay, so now we're ready to load an image. So I'm going to drag an image over to the page and it's going to come in on my layout window. Now, there's several things we can do here. I want to make this image smaller. So I can change the width or the height up at the top by typing it in, or I could drag uh, the side of the image to scale it manually. In this case, I'm going to go up to the top and I'm just going to type in 
a new width for the image. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to type in seven. Make this image a little smaller, not waste so much paper to make our first print. Now I also want to rotate this image 90 degrees because again, it will limit the area on the page that I'm actually using. So once I have it the way I want to, now I can go over to my dashboard and you'll see the print icon up at the very top left of the dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and select print and this is going to send the job to the spooler. You'll get a confirmation that it went over there. Now using the printer icon, I'm going to bring my spooler up and I can see that job in my active queue. Down at the bottom left, I can see progress of that job. And over on the bottom right, you can see a progress bar. Once that image is sent fully to the printer, it's going to move to the bottom of the queue by itself. Now it still may be printing on your printer depending on the size of the buffer or whether your printer has a hard drive or not. Once the image is done printing, it's going to display some information in the log file. Uh, the amount of time it takes is going to be the time measured from the time the data was sent to the printer and the time that the printer received all the data. Now hopefully your print is now coming out on your printer and you've successfully made your first print.